Yeah, I'm ready. We are live, Gary. We are live. The thing too. We are live. We are live. We are live. We are live. Um, how are you, lovely <laughs> Gary? It's Friday. Okay. It's Friday. It's Friday. I'm really good. Um, yeah, I've just been out shopping, actually. I did a bit of work this morning. As you know, I did some work for you. And then I was oh, off into oh, town. No. Sorry, hang on. I'm just closing my door. I always need oh, okay. to stop open so I can see if we're live. And then I, I, my <laughs> alter ego talks back to me. Yeah, go on, I'm listening. Shopping. Hey, hello. I've been doing shopping. And the best thing, do you know what the most cathartic thing, the loveliest thing to do is go clothes shopping because I've got a wedding to go to. Hurrah. Not my own wedding, but I'm going to a wedding as a guest. And so I had to buy a wedding outfit. I had to buy a new hat. And no, I haven't got a hat, but I bought a new pair of <laughs> I can see you in a really big, brimmed, fabulous hat carrying myself. Hat, definitely, at a jaunty angle. Always wear a hat at a jaunty angle. Um, a jaunty no, I have bought a nice pair of, I've got a nice pair of trousers. And here we go, a fascinator. Is that a fascinator? It's a fascinator. <laughs> <laughs> That's not, I think, Rachel, I think you should do the whole show in that hat. Do I you? Got, have, I got, have I got a hat in here? <laughs> I, I do. No, I don't. Oh, I might have a hat. Strike no. a pose. I might have a hat. Um, wait, just just wait there. I could get a hat. <laughs> I think you doing the hat. Just for the fun of it. The problem is we're going to be sewing and I can't actually see. <laughs> So it's health and safety. Oh, you've got the Baker Boy hat on. I've got Anybody the Baker Boy watching, hat. Anybody who's the watching, go to craftymonkey.com, go into the on-demand recordings, filter Gary Mills, and you will see <laughs> the Baker <laughs> Boy class where you can make a beautiful Baker Boy hat. I'll put a link in the exactly. chat below. There we are. And this is my this is my summer. My Actually, that that looks quite nice like that. Just quite edgy. A little <laughs> bit street. A bit street now. <laughs> anyway yes i've got the hat for the wedding and i've got a little outfit got a new little jacket and i'm i'm good to go so um watch this space i might post a few pictures of my all dressed up ready for the wedding but um be quite nice so that was my yes. afternoon and i dashed back here to the studio come to have a catch up with you yes. um so yeah that's where we are <laughs> all i need now is some champagne but you've got your tea and I've got my water. I have. Because yeah, it's still a bit hot, but uh, this is what we do. Most in the afternoon. Tea. <laughs> this is what we do in the afternoon. We have our tea time tutorials where we teach Rachel to sew. Exactly. Uh, so today we are going to be having a look at the sewing machine in more detail, which you can see on the screen up there in the corner. Let me just see if I can spotlight that sewing machine. I'm really hoping that I can. Let me just see. Spotlight for everyone. Oh, yes. Now it's gone big on my screen. I shall watch the live output and see if it goes big on the live output screen in just a second. Uh, but there is the sewing machine. It is a yep. brother sewing machine, but it doesn't matter what sewing machine you have, because our lovely Gary is going to be talking about universal things on sewing machines. And yes, I can see it live now on the screen big. And then um, you can learn. Now, if you are joining us live today, please do leave any comments below. You can ask any questions and we will answer them for you as we go along. So let's just go back to our gallery view now. That should be it. Let me just remove that spotlight. There we go. And then that brings it back to us. So we always have a little sewing lesson or a little arty lesson or something crafty. So I do hope you can join us every Friday. You know what I'm going to say. I'm going to say hit the subscribe button and the bell because that means if you subscribe, you'll get a notification of when we're going live. The bell will remind you and then you can join us live on a Friday. But if you are watching this, do check us out in the rest of our Tea Time tutorial series. Gary, by the way, not only a fabulous hat wearer, a heart wearer, not sure where <laughs> I went there, a heart wearer. Um, he's also, I'm up with this all weekend. I've got white jeans on as well that matches. Um, He's also an amazing, talented, um, well, him out of all traits, dressmaker, artist, creator, video creator now, uh, but a, a teacher with many years experience as well. So do head to our website, craftymonkeys.com. You can find loads of Gary's classes there, live three hour classes that you can download, well, not download, but rent on YouTube watch join in sew and learn now before we do our sewing i always throw something at gary a little bit of live chat only a couple of minutes 
Uh, I'll put timestamps below so you can fast forward straight to the sewing if you would like. But if you would like to hear our little chat, uh, welcome, by the way, people who are joining us. Um, I've got a quote for you. Let me put on my specs so I can read it. It's from Henry Ford. Oh, wow. Gary. Henry Ford. Yes. Yeah. And so he put says my glasses on. Yep. He says this. Failure is the only opportunity. Sorry. Failure is only the opportunity to begin again. Only this time, more wisely. Now, what do we think about that with our positive? I think that's lovely because I think we can all feel like when we fail at anything, it's like a big blow, especially if it's something we really want. And, you know, it's like we've tried and tried and we've had a go. It could be a driving test. It could be an exam anything like that and we just haven't got it it's like and it's such a defeating like almost to give up but actually you've almost like had a chance of even doing it better the next time so yes my and my experience in life you know I didn't pass my driving test first time I didn't pass it the second time I passed it the third time and that's you know third time lucky and I was glad really because on the way I did have a few mishaps um, with my driving, learning to drive. And so it was so much better that when I kept at it. So yeah. I think that's a really good point of view. It's just, it's an opportunity to do it again and to do it better. Yes. And, you know, sometimes I think as well, I mean, just tying in with that, that actually, as you say, failure is a great opportunity in terms of it's not just like, oh, well, let's take it as an opportunity and do something else. No, it's sometimes it's a really good thing because you might have needed a little bit more time on the road practicing before you were legally allowed to drive, because I do feel the universe it moves if you if you go with the flow I know I'm a big sort of universe person but if you go with the flow of energy if you go with what life gives you and you just believe that everything's going to work out yes horrible things happen but things generally you know sort of come back round and and work how they should so I think the same with that if you failed your test you have to sit down and instead of going I'm rubbish I'm this I'm that you just go okay well it wasn't meant to be right now so maybe at that moment I will. And who knows, in that two months, you might have missed a car crash that you would have been involved in, <laughs> but you couldn't because you were you weren't legally drunk. You know, you have to sometimes think of things like that. You have to think, okay, what is the universe trying to tell me here? It's lining me up for something better or whatever, safer or whatever. So yeah, be positive. And I did another um quote in our newsletter today, which has just gone out, uh, which was from a basketball coach. And um, I'm I'm sort of what's the word, making it up here a little bit, but he was talking about mistakes. And he said, only doers make mistakes. So keep doing. There you go. You just keep doing it. Keep making mistakes. Because if you're not there making you mistakes, that means that you're probably not doing anything. That's not good. So come on, peeps. Let's watch Rachel now make lots of mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> As I did last week, putting through <clears throat> my teeth, um, and a variety of other things. I'm not sure I can sew with this. I, I'll push it up like that on my head. Right. Okay. So, so today, that's a good point. We're not going to sew. You're not going to do any sewing. You're just going to set, you're going to get to know the sewing machine and you're yes. going to set up your sewing machine. Yes. So I know that you've had this sewing machine that you're, which is on screen. So the one below, actually on this, my screen, it's below me. Um, yeah, let me, I'll, a, I'll spotlight it for everybody so you can have yes. a machine. Yeah. So there's your machine. And so it's a reasonably um, sort of a new machine. Other people might have older machines than that. They may even have ones where you you just turn the handle. It's not even electric, which is fantastic. But most and nearly all sewing machines are the same in, in a respect that you've got a thread that's going to run through your machine and a thread down here in the bobbin, in the bobbin area at the bottom, and the two link together. So the mechanism links creates like a chain with a link going through it and that's what secures your thread and that's how a sewing machine works so let's just have a look so if we pan out maybe pan to mine let me just talk to you for, i'll yes. talk to you about mine that's and then great. i'll get you to then identify those things on your machine so on this machine you've got back here on my right here there's a wheel yes a wheel that actually that wheel will turn around while it's working and it goes up and down. But it does allow you, and on, the, on all machines, even if they're really old and antique, there will always be a wheel on the right-hand side of the machine. And that just turns the mechanism inside the machine and makes the needle go up and down here. That's useful, especially with some of the older machines when you are maybe the machines fit like you've been sewing and the needle is left down inside 
like this foot plate here. So you can then use your the wheel to turn it up. Now, some modern machines have a little button that will put you can push to bring that up. But when you've learned on an old machine, quite often you use the wheel at the side anyway to start off. So you can always start off with the needle down in the fabric and also when you machine and then you can always bring it up if it's left inside as well before you take the fabric away and the thread. You've got most machines especially the more modern ones, maybe from the sort of like the late 60s, 70s onwards, have got a varying sort of like various stitches. Some have got loads of stitches. Some have got like a little cover that opens up here at the top and it's got all the stitches with a little code number in there. And then digitally you press these in at the, on a side panel. This one has like a wheel. So it's got the pictures of the types of stitches and then you turn the, the wheel to the picture or to the number above. So you get a picture and then you get a number as well. So depending on if you, you know, you prefer numbers or you just like to look at the pictures, you can see as you turn around what you're doing. And these more modern machines from sort of like the 60s, 70s onwards up until present day, where they had the zigzag. So a lot of very old machines only ever did a straight stitch. These have got a zigzag functions and different types of zigzag, which we won't go into today, but that's what the machine does. So instead of going, the needle just going up and down, it will actually go up and down, but it'll go sideways. So it'll go that way as well, which will create your zigzag. OK, so that's a little bit about this end of the mechanism up here. And, and can got... I ask you a question, Gary, um, yeah. about those those stitches there? Because obviously I don't yeah. know how many you've got on your machine. I've actually got 130, I think, 130 stitches. Um, yes. And we have got a little video actually on our YouTube channel where we asked experts, you guys, the teachers, about how many stitches you use. I mean, how many stitches do you use in general um, and which <laughs> stitches are they? Because I suspect that most people only ever use really a straight and a zigzag. You're, you know, that's so true. Because in fact, this one, which is just my take everywhere sewing machine, it's my most portable sewing machine. This one has one to 16 stitches. And one, two, three of those stitches are buttonholes. So one of them would be a buttonhole. That's, and I like this machine because it actually does do a really nice little tailored buttonhole. So that's what some of the modern machines do now. And it's a real, once you've got that as a function on your machine, you really find it like, oh, wow, it's, you know, I can do shirt buttonholes, I can do little jacket buttonholes, and you get three different types. But apart from the buttonhole, all I would really be using would be a straight stitch, and a zigzag, because with a zigzag, you can cut, you can actually, you can finish off the edge of woven fabric. So if you haven't got an overlock or a serger, you can just put a zigzag along the edge of your cut edge of your woven fabric, and that'll stop it from fraying once you've pressed it. Or if you're working on jersey stretch fabrics, the zigzag is the appropriate stitch to have rather than a straight stitch. And we can talk about that another live at five. But so it's usually rule of thumb, it's straight stitch on woven fabric, and a variant of zigzag. So any type of zigzag is appropriate for jersey fabric. So when you use a zigzag, it still allows it to stretch, go backwards and forwards. Rather, if you try to stretch it with a straight stitch in it, you'll find that it would just snap and it would start to come undone. So there, so basically that is three, for me, it's two main stitches. So it's the straight stitch and the zigzag. And then my little, my little luxury is, for me, is a buttonhole. So that's what I quite like. I mean, and I use, do all, sorry, go on. I was going to say, Gary, do all machines have zigzag? Well, no, prior to sort of like the late 60s, if you have a, like an old, very old vintage sewing machine, you're probably fine. That it only does a straight stitch. So if you look at those old Singer um, sewing machines, I think there was like a, there was a Viking one as well. And those old machines, even like ones that fitted into a treadle where you moved your foot up and down to make the machine work, they will only really do straight stitches. Whereas the more, once we got into more mechanism when they did the zigzag came after that. So I would say that started coming out in the sort of like mid late sixties was zigzag machine and into the seventies. And that's where we started seeing that as a function on these types of machines. Okay. So, um, yeah. Okay. So uh, we usually have somewhere where we can put, so we've got somewhere where we can um, create, we're going to have to wind a bobbin. I'm going to do that with you all. I'm going to get you to do that, Rachel. I'm going to get okay. you to, first of all, you're going to wind a bobbin. And then, so you're going to have to put, you've got somewhere to put a spool of thread. And um, just a word about thread. You know, I always talk about thread and different ways of threading the needle and that. 
please everyone use a well-known make of threads don't be tempted by cheap boxes of threads in the supermarket where you get that lovely array of rainbow colors of thread you think oh that's that's just perfect you'll actually find that, that thread quality isn't very good it's either going to be really sort of what i call furry fluffy thread and so it's it tends to get caught up as it goes through or it might be quite brittle it might actually break as it's going through and it's so frustrating keep having to re-thread the needle again don't be tempted by old vintage threads so quite often we get passed down threads from grandma's sewing box what will happen with thread, if, especially if it's pure cotton thread, it will have rotted. So again, it tends to snap, it tends to get caught up in things. So buy a newish, you know, new quality thread, a branded quality. So there's many brands out there, but a good branded quality thread. I'm going to use black today because I, so you can just see it better. But obviously you'd be using a thread that's appropriate to whatever you're making. So the right sort of color, so it blends in, unless you want it as a contrast. So you might be using it as a top stitch thread. But um, yeah, so this is just a, um, a polyester. So a polyester, 100% polyester thread. And um, I'm just using that. And that's sort of like what they call a sew all thread. You can get pure cotton, especially for the quilt makers. They quite like a pure cotton thread because they're using pure cotton fabrics. And but it's entirely down to you what you prefer to use. So that's the thread. Now. Um, Another thing that people start to play around with is this wheel up here. There's a wheel here, which is the tension wheel. Now it might be there, or it could be down here somewhere. It could be um, where you, the thread goes through. It could be wrapped around there. And there's usually a series of numbers. Now, when if you've ever had your machine serviced or it's come from the manufacturer and you've got it out the box, my advice would be don't play around with that wheel. So you've got the, yes, that's it, Rachel. So you've got the wheel there. It's usually set at a really good um, sort of position. And here it's between three, four and five. If you want the thread to start coming through looser, you reduce the number. If you find that the thread is looping a little bit down here, you tighten it. But to be quite honest, most threads stay between that sort of average, sort of like between three, four and five on the tension along there. Another thing is, is the needle. There are different types of needles. So the needle you've got in here, different sizes, thicknesses, depending on what fabric you're using. So the finer the fabric, the narrower the needle. The type of fabric, so you've got from woven, which I've mentioned, which would be a pointed needle, then you can have something for jeans. So think of a real tech sort of tough denim jeans. You can get a needle for that. You can get a needle for leather to work with leather. You can get, if you like to do embroidery, you can get needles which are specific for embroidery. So if your thread, is some of those like lustrous threads that you use for embroidery. There is a needle that you can use for your sewing machine that actually stops the thread getting shredded or just keeps breaking, which can happen with some of those more lustrous sort of um, threads. There is also, you use a different needle for stretch fabrics as well. So you'd use either a ballpoint needle or a jersey needle, which is a ballpoint needle. It's not necessarily a point. It's got under a microscope, you'll see that the very tip of that needle is slightly rounded. And that's if you imagine you've got a woe or a knitted fabric, it's so that the round ball will go between the threads or the yarns rather than trying to pierce the yarns. So if you do that, what can happen is, is your jersey fabric can ladder. So you don't want it to ladder, it will spoil it. So you want a ball point. So the ball point, rather than hitting and, and piercing the thread, it's going to the ball point will find its way through and go through. And that's why we use a different needle for Jersey. There's a lots of other needles I could talk about, but that in general is what you've got to do. Right, Rachel. Okay. Well, yes. we are going to we are going to thread a bobbin. So I'll do I'll demonstrate first on mine about threading a bobbin. And there's things I've seen people do when threading a bobbin. I've seen them holding it, I've seen them fiddling around with the spool, all sorts of things. And I question, say, why are you doing that? Oh, my machine likes it. I even had someone tell me that their machine didn't like a certain color. And whenever they put the color in the machine, it always went wrong. I couldn't quite believe that, but maybe there's something going on there that I don't know about. But anyway, I'm gonna put my, <laughs> so my, for me, okay. the thread, if you look at the spool of thread here, so you, there is a right end and a wrong end to this spool. There is like this, which is the smooth end. And then on this spool, it's got like a sort of a, like a little jagged sort of, um, a, a double little piece there that's so when you take the thread away you don't just leave that bit of thread dangling you wind it round the spool and then you just trap the thread between 
those two there. Can you see that's trapped there? That's trapped between that. And that just holds it. That stops it getting unthreaded in your needlework basket. But you can take that out. This is what fits the back. So it might be standing up like this. If you can just about see that if I come back a bit like that. Let me see if I can get that. Just angle up a little bit so you can see. There we are. So some machines have the thread up here. Mine goes on a shuttle at the side. So it's just going on the side. And I've got this like little cap that you put on. So I just put the little cap. Don't put the cap on really tight, so tight that this is like can't move. You want a little bit of give. If you've got one of those that like here, if you've got a, a one that's got a cap, you want it to be able to give a bit, but not too much. Then you will have a look on the top of the machine. It shows you where to thread around the top to come over to the spool. The little, um, what we call this, this is the little, like a little, uh, the bobbin case, sorry, the empty bobbin case. Something else people do as well is they just take the one bobbin case. They don't take what's left on one because they can't find an empty one. So they start wrapping more thread on top of that. I just think that starts to look really untidy. You might as well look for a bobbin that perhaps has only got a little bit left on it, like that one, and just take that off. Just take it off, and then you've got a nice clean bobbin. So the bobbin goes for me, it goes on the top. I'm gonna to just leave that there for the minute. Yours might click onto the side, but I think for you, Rachel, yours yeah. is a brother machine like mine. Yours go on the top then. Okay. Right, so we, we take the threads, and then you'll see on a lot of the new machines now, they're actually like, it's quite nicely because it's clearly labeled. So it goes from one, two, three and it comes back to here so it just goes under that little hook there and then under here and then it just wraps around that little almost like that little piece there it's sort of and there's a little diagram on top to say go down through wrap around with the older machines they always start from the thread here and it might just go round a little disc at the front a little like little just like this just like a little catch for it to go under there before it comes back to the bobbin or your bobbin winder might be on the side here it could be there so I'm going to just take it back there. Now on my machine, all I have to do is just click that back in position. Some of you might have to then lock your wheel. So some of them will have like you just pull the wheel out and it locks, it stops the mechanism working. On mine, by just clicking that back into position, this needle isn't going to go up and down anymore. So that's just going to stay where it is. So with this one, you just wrap it round and it shows a little diagram says, how to wrap it around. So you wrap it around the, like the shaft of the bobbin, not on the top up here, just around the shaft, wrap it around three or four times. And then you just, with this, you just, there's a little hook there and you just hook it underneath and you just break it off. Oh, no, that's, the interesting. that's interesting, Gary, because it doesn't say to go around two or three times. So I was just doing it one, but you recommend going around your bobbin two or three times? Yeah, I would. So it shows you on the top to go round and I go one, two, three, about four times and then click under. Because I think if you don't do that, it's yeah. not, you haven't anchored it at all to get started and you'll find that it's, it's just not catching. It's not catching and it'll keep coming off. So um, I've just done it like that. I'm going to just turn my power on. Oh, we have power. And these modern machines, you can actually operate them from here. You, you don't have to put, see, this is my pedal. So it's a bit like your accelerator on your car. So that's my pedal, which I'm going to just click into the side. Some of the machines have this, and this one is, is an optional extra. So you can have it on or you can have it off, and then you can just operate it from here. I like to use the pedal. I'm much happier getting it going with the pedal, though I have seen people create things without having the pedal and just with the hands here guiding the fabric and just touching that button to go forward. But I, I just, I just, I like both hands when I'm sewing. I like to have both hands in there. I'm just gonna put that in. Some of the other machines might not necessarily have um, the foot separate. It might be all in with the cable. So you plug the cable in and one bit goes into your plug socket for the electricity and the other is a lead which is going to your, um, to your pedal for your acceleration. So anyway, so I'm going to just, it's all click ready to go. And I'm just going to just press my foot down slowly on the accelerator. I'm not like on a race course and I'm not putting the foot right to the floor. I'm just going to start it off early. Because sometimes if you go too fast, too quickly, what happens is that thread on that spool will just jump off. Now, another thing, while this is all happening, don't start getting your fingers and holding this thread. Now I've seen this happen where people have just sort of like they're grabbing hold of that and it's running through their fingers. And I said, what are you doing? And they <laughs> said, oh, well, it just <laughs> makes it, <laughs> just, what are you doing? <laughs> they said, oh, well, if I hold that, it seems to go, it's 
it goes up and down better at the side here. Now, it won't. It should just go up and down, up and down, up and down, and it should just fill out. For this exercise, I'm not doing a full bobbin. So I'm going to stop here. I'm going to let you now, Rachel, do yours. Let's see if you can get yours can you see? filled up. Look. Yes, I can see. Yes. Yeah. Now, yeah, it is. Now, it's going round. I think it looks a bit messy. Well, no, hang on. No, it is. No, it's okay. It looks. Is it going round? Is it right? Stop there. Is it even? Is it nice and even? No, it does look even. Hang on. Is it very right? As it's round there, is it nice and close and tight to the spool or is it loose and all fluffy? It's loose. Look. Right. OK, so what I want you to do now is I want you to trace along the top. I want you to have a look at the top of your machine. So you've, you've done the, the threads right there. That's right. So let's go to where the thread comes off the spool and goes under. So it's going under a little eyelet. Hang on. I've got, it's very hard for me to do with this camera. Let me just turn this camera around. Hang on. Got it. Um, Hang on, <laughs> let me just turn the camera around if I can, because then it would be easier. That's it, isn't it? Yes, right, okay, yeah. now I can see. Okay, so I'm now doing. I can see. Right. So you've so got the thread the... That off the yeah. spool, yeah. and then you're going to go toward the thread, should go to your left, and it's gonna go under, so it's got a little hook. So you've hooked it under there, Yeah. that's lovely. Now, you've got a little, um, a, almost like a little piece that's sticking out of the top there, not the silver piece, you need to put it under at the back here. So at the back, no. So if you carry on, don't do that yet. You need to go under here at the side here, under here. So can you have a look at the camera where I'm pointing at the back of the machine? Yeah. There's a piece of plastic that sticks out. It needs, yeah. that's it. It goes under there. That's it. Right. That's it. And now it hooks almost like a figure out back on itself round that. So you're going to bring it um, the other side of that, that little metal post, that's it. Then come back to your left, hooking on the hook, under the hook, that's it. And then round there, under, lift it up. Yeah. And round, no, don't catch it that way. So just, you under want there. it just, yeah, just caught under the hook. So go down under the hook. Yeah. Go now, go, just catch it under the hook. I've done that. It's under there, look. And then, come, and then come out, go left, and then down to your right. So like you're this. going to go anti-clockwise. So it's under that little piece, is it? Yes, it's a look. If I show you, hang on. So I've gone round the thing like that, underneath, like yeah. that. And then pull it like that. No, that's a bit overcomplicated now, okay. right? So I'm going to show you mine. I'm going to do mine on screen. Okay, so... All right, so I'm going to bring this up on for you to see. So I'm going to, und I'm going to just, because my spool is done, so that doesn't matter. So let's undo that. Do, do, do. So we've got it under the back there, which is the bit that you missed out that's got to go under the back. Then it goes over that little hook. So it's going over that hook, and it comes around this way. Oh, okay, hang on. Right, so it goes under there, it goes under that hook and round. Is it, going yes. is it going in that bit? Yes. 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 So it goes under that right. little bit there. Then it and goes now go there. to. Yes. So. Now. Well done. And that's okay. really good because actually, you know, when, when, um, you know, something, when you, when it gets, when it goes wrong, that's fantastic because then I can actually really go through it with you to tell you what exactly. you need to do. Exactly. And that's what I've done. I've missed that hooky thing. Okay. Let me see. Yeah. Let's now, find Rachel. It. Yeah. Now, Remember what I said about messy spools. So what you've got to do is you've got to take all that, what's on that oh. spool, you've got to take that off because that will catch in, that'll get all loose and that'll catch on your mechanism. So just, you can, you can either unravel it or you can cut it away because it looks quite loose. It's, it's um, you can probably cut it off if you can. Okay, hang on. Uh, right, let me, let me just remove this spotlight so people are not watching um, me with my phone. <laughs> <laughs> okay we're moving there you go so we've got your machine on now right let me just get rid of this um from here let me just cut it away i've actually got scissors this week hurrah did you go out and buy some scissors or you just found them you found, found you them. Had them i've actually on. found three pairs of scissors good hurrah amazing amazing hurrah. right hang on you're 
I'm having to cut this off because it's all a bit. Yeah. Of a and you know, the, and again, the temptation would be, oh, I'll just do it over the top. It, it, exactly what you do. But if you did, what would happen is, yes, it would get compacted and it wouldn't, perhaps you wouldn't see it for a while. But as you were taking that bobbin was being used, <laughs> it would start to come away and it get loose. And what you'd find in your underneath where you put your bobbin, you'd have a what would be look, look like a bird's nest under there. So that really needs to be tidied up. So, yeah. I mean, if you had more time, you could unravel it and put it back on the spool. But don't worry about that at the moment. Just cut that off and we'll get a... You want a nice, compacted, light, light, sort of like tightly woven, or not woven, but wound bobbing. Okay, I'm nearly there. I've nearly got it all off. Okay, that will do. That will okay. do. Okay. Right, for the purposes of this. Right, so we push that back in. And then I take that and I go around a couple of times. I'll go under there. Let's see what happens. I'll get my camera in a second. Oh, okay. So I'm going to position my camera. I'm now right. going to, I mean, it's very difficult trying to uh, <laughs> do this as well as uh, filming. <laughs> right, here we go. I'm now pressing. Right. Now that's a lot neater. That's <laughs> so much better, isn't it? So, so it's much about better. and realizing that. That's all. That's what it needs to look like. So you can stop at that point. So you can stop there. We don't need to do a full bobbin. Obviously, these machines, what they do do, and I, even the older ones, as soon as they sort of like the bobbin is completely filled up, it just like almost like just pops. It just it just pops off. So it just sort of pop off, and then you're ready with your yeah. bobbin. Then and you can take it off. Obviously, you trim it, and you can take it off, and then it's ready to go. All yeah. right. Well, how are we doing for time? We can do another five minutes. I'll just get you just to thread it up, okay. and then. You'll be ready for next week. Yay! <laughs> and maybe some, and maybe a couple of think about a couple of top tips that people top if you're tip. watching this video about sewing machines, if you can think of yes. anything. Right. Absolutely. So, yeah. so do you then leave it in that position, Gary? That we've just we locked. No, no, you no. Back. So don't have it locked. So unlock it. So wherever it is. So if it needs, it's locked. Then yeah. unlock it. So put it back in it its off. position. Put the thread. If you've like, you know, on those older machines or the machines where you have to lock the flywheel at the side here on the right, uh, now you can then reposition it so you can put it back so that yeah. your dry, your shaft on the top works still. So that's fine. Okay, okay. so we're going to put our bobbin just to one side. Leave that down there for a minute. I'm going to just put it there. So what you're going to do now is now you're going to thread your machine. So again, you know, it, there should be, there's like on the more modern machines, there's like numbers again to guide you how to do that. Some machines even have a little threader, which I would say, if you can get to grips with a threader, it does help you. But I don't find, sometimes it doesn't work for me. So I'm going to do the old fashioned way of threading it by hand. Um, with any machine, no matter what uh, make or anything, or what age as well, you'll be surprised, even if you haven't got the manual, you've lost the manual or you've you know, you've inherited a sewing machine or you found one under the stairs, you know, which has been left there for ages. You can't find the manual. You don't know how, you know, how it works, how you thread it. You'll find online that there are quite often printable PDFs that you download and be able to, that you'll be able to follow as well. So um, do, you know, if you haven't got your manual, do have a look. Now, where we threaded before, so we had it through the little, that little eyelet up there. We're going to come down now, still almost like as you had it before. So we're going to go down that little bit at the back there. And we're going to just come down. So I'm following my numbers on mine. So mine goes one, two, three, up. And then I just catch it on the hook, which is sort of like the hook that sort of pulls the thread up and down, up and down, up and down like that. And then I'm going to come down through the bottom. And I'm just, there's a little hook, number six, which is just, almost like just under here by the needle, it just hooks behind a little hook, a little like little arm, metal arm that comes. So you just hook it in there and then I'm ready to thread. I'm not gonna thread yet. I'm gonna let you do your threading up now. So I'm gonna let you go through and thread that up. Okay, um, let, well, I've already done that bit. So let me just go, let me just spotlight my um, but my, um, my machine. So yeah. Um, yeah, so as you can see, yes, we went across like this. And then we've yeah. taken it and we've gone down there. Yeah. Uh, up. There's a hook in there. So I've pulled it have down. Have you caught it? Is it on the hook? Can you see it hook on? I think hook it on? is. I think it is. I mean, I don't know how I did that, but I just did okay. it. Okay. So if you can't quite see it because it's buried down inside the machine, you use your flywheel at the side to just bring that, bring the, that little yeah, arm up. Yeah, I can up. see it. Yeah, I, I can it. absolutely see it. It's in there. Good. Good. Okay. That needs to be at the top. 
So that's fine. Okay. And then it comes down here. And I'm and now in. Be, that's it. And there should be a little number, number six down there. You should be able to hook it behind that before you then are ready to then thread your needle. Now, I can't see number six. I can't see it. But I guess it's just there somewhere. Is it in there? Yes, yeah, that's it. That's it. It's just that's there. it, Rachel. Lovely. Okay, Lovely. OK, so you're ready to now thread your needle. So you want the needle up as in the highest position as well. Yeah. Some you might have that as a button. So you might be able to push a button at the side of your machine to say, bring the needle up. Or again, you go back to that little flywheel on the side on the right and you bring it up to its highest position yeah. so that you can access that needle. The other thing you do is you put your foot <coughs> of the machine down. So that if you've got a foot in the way, because when you've got your presser foot up, yeah. it's not enough room to get in there. So I put my presser foot down. I then also what I do do is I always cut the thread again, even though I probably cut it, cut it, because that's not a word, cut it earlier on when I threaded up through the top. Sometimes just by handling the thread, I just do a really nice sharp cut because mm -hmm. the nice and sharp cuts that you've got, the easier it is they're going to be threaded. You don't want that all frayed on the end or all, you know, a bit sort of um, split or whatever. So you want a really nice sharp cut there. And then again, then you're going to thread it. So I'm not going to use my automatic threader because I just think that's cheating and not everyone's got one of them. But what you do again is, I don't know if you remember me saying last week about threading through towards something. So I always take my finger and I put my finger behind the needle. So I'm not aiming for midair. What I'm aiming for is the hole that I can see, which is then almost like, um, sort of mirror not mirrored is, is actually can be seen um framed the needle is framed by using my finger behind it and then it's easier for me to thread and then i'm going to just pull my thread through like so and then i just leave my thread to one side in fact what i can do is i can lift my lift my presser foot up and i can just catch it on underneath like so i like that how have you got on with threading well, I'm struggling with the old needle, but I have got an automatic thread. Oh, I've done it. You've done it, fine. And well, did you use, did it help you by having your finger yes, behind it? Yes, I have my finger behind. And do you know something? You know, when I've tried to thread needles before on this machine, I haven't put my finger behind it. It seems like such a simple little thing, but if you don't know, you yes. just sit there aiming so at I, the hole in the light and, yes, um, and then yeah. you can't, you can't yes. see. As soon as you put your finger behind the needle, it frames the needle so then you can actually see where the hole is. And so you know where you're aiming for there. So it just exactly. makes life much easier. Now, I think, and I also, I have said this before, what you can, the other thing you can do is you could hold a little bit of, just a tiny piece of white or white card or black card, depending on if you, if you didn't want to get, if you didn't want to get your finger behind there, just a little bit of card behind, depending on if it was, Say I'm using black thread, I'd use a bit of white card behind so I could see where I was threading through. If I'm using white thread, I could put a bit of black card behind and then I could see where my white thread was. And those are all little things that help you, especially like of us, you know, as we're getting older, we have to wear glasses, we have to have really good light around us. And the lights on the machines aren't necessarily really going to illuminate that really well. In fact, round me here, I've got a really nice daylight little angle poise that I use for sewing. And I just find that is, in, you know, invaluable. So I can see, because those yeah. things that do help you, it's obviously, if you've got to wear glasses, put the glasses on, cut that thread nice and cleanly, have something you can put behind and have good light around you. Either work by a window or have a daylight, um, nice little angle poise that you can get. Really, really helps for your sewing. Okay, we're gonna drop in the, the bobbin now. So there's two different types of bobbin case. They're basically the same. Some are top loaders. So this is a bit like a washing machine, top loader or side loader. Now I've got another machine with me so I can show you a side load, but this one is a top load for this one. So this one is like, you've got a little thing to pop open and it's got a little clear little top, which is quite nice though, because you can actually see underneath when your, um, your thread is running out. But again, there should be a little diagram here on the foot plate to show you how to do it. But in rule of thumb is hold the bobbin in your right hand and have the thread coming out towards your left. Yeah. You then hold on to that thread coming out to your left. You drop the bobbin in, drop it down so it just sits there nice and comfortably. And then there's like a little catch arm thing. And mine's got a little arrow in that just says hook it under and around 
and down like that. And there's a little blade that just cuts it here. And then I just put my little position in and then that's all ready to go. So I'm all ready for that one. How you got on with yours? Yep, so I'll just show you um, what I've done. Add a spotlight, so can you see? Lovely, yeah. So I've gone in there, followed it round and it's there. So it's like that. And Perfect. I can see now if I pull, that bobbin is moving. Yes, so it runs quite nice and smoothly. It just runs freely. Good, so I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna put another machine on the desk which is a side loading one. So like, like your washing machine, it's a side. I'm gonna put my machine on the floor, excuse me. Right, that's on the floor. Let me get this one. Whoa. Gosh, there we go. All right. <laughs> so again, this is just a very simple, very basic sewing machine. And for many of you out there that perhaps just thought, that, I mean, think they might just wanna get started on sewing, you know, you can get some with very, just very simple stitches, and it's quite a very reasonable price, this one. So this one you can take, and my one does as well, you can take this sort of section off. This is gives you a bed to sew on, but also what it does, if you take that bit away, it gives you almost like an arm. So imagine you're going around a, like a circle cuff. It's so that you can get the cuff on here and you can sew round and it sits on under there. But here, this in there is where your bobbin goes. And this goes in what we call, it's a bobbin case. So it's a little case. So you might have, it looks like this, yes, like that. And that's where your bobbin sits in there. So it's slightly a little bit different. So it's a bit more, rather than just dropping it in from the top, <coughs> you've got to, first of all, drop it into the, um, into the case. So the case will be empty because your bobbin has been filled up like so. So again, with the thread running to the left, you hold the bobbin in your right hand. You put the bobbin down into the case, so the bobbin's upside down, you're gonna drop it in, and you'll see there's like a little groove at the side. And then you let the thread, or let that little bit of thread drop into that groove, and then you pull across until it clicks, it comes, and it slips. What it does, it slips, there's a piece of metal there, and it slips behind the metal and comes out, and there's a little groove here at the side, just there, just where that arm, that little piece of metal sticks out like that. So it should look just like that, okay. Now, so if you've got a lot of thread coming off, I wouldn't cut it really short, I wouldn't cut it really tight, but if you've got too much, maybe just, what's that, probably about three, four inches long, it's probably just enough. Now here inside here, we've got the bobbin case, and I might just, so you can see it a little bit better, but just position it like that, you can see it a little bit better. Can you see there's like a little, up there, there's like a little, like little yes. simple, like a little groove. So on this, you've got the little arm, that little metal arm. That is where that's got to sit in. So when I place it in, I've got my arm to the top, that little metal arm, and I'm going to just put it in, and I'm just going to position it so that arm meets that sort of middle dimple, and then it just fits in. So you hear it click in there. Yeah. And then I can shut the door, and then I'm ready to go. So it is slightly different. It's almost like it's about two, you know, maybe rather than just dropping it in and just getting it to go, that is like a sort of two or three sort of like sort of sequence of things you have to do to get it in there. But once you've got the knack of it and you've got the thread in the right place, you should be able to um, be able to do that. OK, right. So that's it for today. Um, now, well, you want now, how many say, recommendations? You want some recommendations? Well, I'm just going to say, Gary, the only thing I would say is now I've got my um my bobbin in there and my needle now don't you have to move the needle down to then hook the two together or is that for old machines you know um yes so that's a really good point so yes you could let's bring over the other machine let me bring my other one back up so with the older machines the, with the new machines they're just ready to go they will start sewing straight away but yeah. what you can do just to make sure that you've caught it especially in the older ones you can go down yeah. And, I'm using, and I'm just using my um, the wheel at the side. And then you come up once and you should find that it has now yes, caught yeah. and it's hooked. And then you can pull those two threads together. They should run nice and smoothly. And then you can just trim them like that. So that would get you started. OK, cool. Ready to sew. Now, the other question I have, Gary, is can we do a quick automatic threader? Because I have got the automatic threader. And I struggle with it, even though it's supposed to be easy. I mean, I did find that actually easy doing the needle there. But um, can we do that? 
Okay, now what I understand, so I can't guarantee this is gonna work on all of the machines, <laughs> but what you do, so let's take the thread out. So this is those that have got an automatic thread. Best to have the foot down, so best to have the foot down. And then you've got this little, like this mechanism at the side here, haven't you? So you thread it, you don't have it through the needle, obviously, but you do thread it up to that, which I said, the little arm on six. Yeah. You press, what you need to do is you need to make sure that you've pressed the button, which puts the needle in the position. Don't, you don't do it with the wiggling it from the side. So don't yeah. do it with the flywheel to get in position. Use that button and yes. bring it up to its upright position. You then, can then hook what you need to do is with these with these um self um uh what do we call it <laughs> self thread machines yeah now the idea is that you thread what you do is you hold it with one hand you hook it under the other and you're supposed to just press it and it goes through now mine i never get mine to work it never works for me um and I don't know why. You can try. You can try yours, but you can, what you need to do is you can just bring it down. What you need to do is you need to hook that piece of thread to the side on the side. You hold, just gently hold it, and then you press it down quickly, and it should shoot through. Mine never does. No, mine isn't doing it either, and I don't know why. No. Um, oh is... wait, I know. Doesn't it have to go? Hang on. Doesn't it have to go um, in there as well? So it goes in the back bit and up, like oh, it's not, it's gone, it's not coming kind of in there anyway. Um, no. I thought it might have to be in that bit. Hang on, like in there because it's going to. I don't know why because I see that should be con making that should be going in there now, shouldn't it? Yeah. And I don't know why it's not, unless that should be in. Uh, do you know what? I think it's got to be in there. So I think that, let's just see if that goes in the middle. Oh, it's so hard. It's actually much easier to just do it by hand. Yes. And <laughs> hang on, in and up. And then we just go like that. No, it's not doing it. I don't know why it's not doing it, but I always struggle with that as well. But I think, as we said, if we just hold our finger behind and you just use it that way, then you should be able to get that needle threaded like that. See? Yes. Old fashioned way, much easier. Use the finger behind the needle. Perfect. <laughs> yes. Perfect. Okay, okay. so. Lovely. Yeah. So what things can we say before we leave? And then next week we'll be actually starting to do some sewing because we're all yeah. ready. So, uh, it'd be really nice. Just if someone has, you know, if you're there or you come across this little, little, our little live session or, or a, as a recording or you're here live now and you've got a machine and you'd like to start using it or you fancy start sewing. I mean, this is the perfect opportunity to then have a little go at threading it up, first of all. And getting a bobbin just you know don't have to even take it to stitches just get used to threading it up and how it's supposed to work as i said you can go online and find even i can find some of my because i've got a vintage little vintage uh, singer machine i can find the handbook for that which is a pdf online so it's amazing how many you know all the different types of machines that you can find the instructions for by you know the the joys of the internet if you haven't bought a machine and you're thinking, well, I'd, I'd like to buy a machine and I don't know what to do, what, what I should, should I go to the supermarket and buy one for 99 pounds? And will that be okay? It is, you know, there is that saying that you, you, what you spend is what you get. Okay. So it is a cheaper machine. It isn't going to be up to a lot of hard work, but if it's just because you want to try out, you're not sure if you want to start saying, then I would say, yeah, buy you know, you can get um, a branded Singer sewing machine for £99 from the supermarket. But if you may be thinking, I, I, I've done that, I've tried out with someone else's machine, I'm getting on with it okay, maybe I did all right when I was at school, then maybe you need to go for a lot more middle of the road. And I would say, you know, go again, go for a good brand rather than um, something that perhaps you haven't heard of before. And your top brands are sort of Brother, Jean, uh, Benina, 
Benina. Uh, show me. Yeah. Singer. They're good ones. Sing, you know, yeah, those, of course. You know, yeah, with yeah, yeah, those yeah. sort of well-known. There's like Hertz Kavana as well. I mean, I still see it. Some of my classes, my students, that Hertz Kavanas that they were given when they were 21 and now they're like in their 60s and 70s. You know, they've had them for a really long time and they're still going strong. You don't need hundreds and hundreds of, of like stitch options on the front. And sometimes I think that can overcomplicate things and it's more to go wrong. That's, you know, my father always said to me, the more gadgets you have on your car, there is more to go wrong. And that's very true. So you don't need lots of stitches, really. You just need, as I said at the beginning there, just a few stitches, some basic stitches that, you know, that you're going to use. Um, you can always, you know, get something a bit later. And obviously, you know, money's if money's no object, you can spend a lot of money on some of these sewing machines. So the fact that sometimes they've spent, I've seen people turn up to classes with the, the all singing, all dancing sewing machine, and they have to have a Sherpa bring it in. And that's usually a husband <laughs> or a boyfriend. I mean, you know, these are just, you know, I'm being quite sexy at the moment, but they do. And they're thinking, oh, is he coming as well? I said, no, that's just the Sherpa. He's just bringing my machine in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In the trolley. So um, so just think about that. You want something, especially if you like coming to classes or even if you're working in a, like your little sewing room or something you've got to get in and out. Maybe you haven't got the luxury of a sewing room. Maybe you just have to get it on the, you know, put it up on the dining room table. Then what I would say is you need something that's portable, something you can lift, something that is comfortable to lift, something that you can put in. A, it's got its bag to go away so you can put it away, be that on the understairs cupboard or in the, in the wardrobe in the spare bedroom. But that is a good point is nothing too big that you can't store away later you can buy that if you really get into it and you've won you know the um the lottery then yes do it have a go but i would say sometimes some of these big machines with all the buttons they give you a free course to learn how to do it now that says something to me that it can't just be an easy manual what happens is you have to go to the course and really unless you're good at taking notes and you photographed everything as you go along. If you don't use that function, you're going to forget. And when it comes to like, oh, how do I do a bottom hole? Well, you're either going to have to look online and have a look at the video that shows you how to do it, or maybe look through the, the manual. So be aware of some of those really high-end machines that you sometimes get sent away on a, like a day's training to do it. And if you're good at remembering, that's fine. If it goes one like me in one ear out the other, and I, if I haven't used that practice, I forget it. So that's a really good point to think about. Okay. Lovely. Well, if anybody has just joined us or is watching the end of this video and thinking, why is she wearing a wedding hat? You'd have to watch the beginning of the video when we're talking about Gary exactly. going shopping. And then we just both randomly grabbed hats because this is quite a random little thing that we do here, but it's a lot of fun. <laughs> and going back to the beginning, what I would say is get your machine out. And as we said in the beginning, beginning failure is a chance to redo things. Do things and make mistakes. Only do is make mistakes and then learn from those mistakes. So definitely get that machine out. I'm really excited. It's all threaded and ready to go. It will now sit here until our week next week, our lesson yeah. next Friday. So we've threaded, we've done the bobbin. I've learned, you know, that, that needle thing. I tell you, because that threader, I spent ages with that automatic threader. It's just easy to do it. If your finger's behind the needle, I never knew. And the bobbin, in terms of been tight, I would have moved it like, why is that loose? Why is that loose? As you say, it's just simple little things. So hopefully we've helped you if you've been watching us today. And next week, Gary, what are we going to be doing? Not wearing Okay, a right. <laughs> what am I letting okay, myself in for? Next week. So um, I'm going to get you to actually start sewing some, some, some seams on this sewing machine. So on the plate on the sewing machine, there is like a guide for seam allowance. So I want you to get your seam allowance right. So I'm going to get you, first of all, just do a straight seam, but it's going to be, I'm going to get you to do a one and a half inch seam allowance, a quarter of an inch, and just see how you get on with just doing straight lines. And you're going to start with a back stitch and finish with a back stitch. So it's a nice secure seam. We're then, so we're going to do maybe two or three options of that. Then I'm going to get you to do a French seam. So we're in tomorrow, um, in next week's lesson, we're going to do seams. So we're going to just do straight seams, but then we're going to do a French seam as well. All right. I feel very French in my little hat, actually. I'm excited. Okay, <laughs> fabulous. Right, I cannot see. Um, lovely. Thank you, Gary, so much. Thank you to everybody who has watched this video. Please do like and subscribe. Hit the buttons. Tell your friends. It would help us to get the word out there. And as I always say, I have a glass of water. If you'd like to buy us a coffee, there is a link down below. Click.
and buy. If you feel like we've taught you something today and you've gone, that's brilliant, that's worth the coffee, then do hit the link. Lovely. And um, thank you so much, lovely Gary. Thank you to you for watching. And we will see you in the next episode. If you can't join us live, of course, just look at the playlist. It's there for you and uh, it will be in the tea time tutorials. But there are loads of other playlists. If you are a serious sewist or if you know a friend who's a serious sewist, let them know. We've got amazing blocks and projects and all sorts of things from some of the best quilters in the world on our channel. We're just at the beginning stages. They're well advanced. But that's what we do, Gary, don't we? We, we do. For everybody. You can be a monkey, no matter how experienced. You can be the king of the jungle or a little tiny chimp playing <laughs> and learning how to eat leaves or whatever they do. <laughs> right, I'm going to end this stream before I spout any more nonsense. So thank you so much, everybody. And thank you to Gary. And thank Good you. Day. Machine. Okay. See you next Bye. time. Bye.